girls and gals happy monday today is the start of another weekly reading vlog i know that i took a couple of weeks off of reading vlogs and that is just because no matter the length of them no matter how long or how short they are they are a big commitment just in terms of compiling together all the footage making sure that they're in like a cohesive sort of narrative and then of course editing it uploading it all of that stuff in addition to regular videos um and this isn't my job or anything so sit down videos are definitely a lot easier for me so I took a couple weeks off and I found myself actually really missing it so here's another weekly reading vlog so if I haven't said it before it is Monday and yesterday I actually started and finished a book and that is the Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Mass this is the bind up of five novellas before Throne of Glass happens. I'm very, very late to this series. So I believe initially this bind up, the timeline is a little convoluted. So from what I can tell, um, I believe these were out um, as like a digital copy somewhere before Throne of Glass was published as a physical copy. And then these actually came out as a physical copy after the third book or after the second book, something like that. It's a prequel to the events, like leading right up to the events that kick off the Throne of Glass series. And so I didn't really know that potentially we were supposed to read this first. And I still don't know whether or not I'd say read this one first or read Throne of Glass first, just because for Throne of Glass at the time, I couldn't tell if it was like some weird combination of YA fantasy world building and just like you know little snafus and just a debut work is not going to be your best work ever so obviously the goal is to get better and better at writing as you go along there were some things that were mentioned some characters that were mentioned some events that were mentioned that were almost referenced where I thought that maybe I shouldn't have read Throne of Glass first. So I decided to go ahead and pick this one up before I continued on with the main series. And I don't know whether or not I would have had a better reading experience reading Throne of Glass had I read this first because other than the world building that you get um, in each different novella, they're all actually kind of set, except for the last two, in very different places in the world. So other than a brief setup of that specific location, there's really not a lot of world building. So in a lot of ways, this does feel like something you can't fully appreciate once you read Throne of Glass because that definitely sets up more about the whole continent and the kingdoms and different political factions and so on and so forth. But this one, I felt like there's a character that features heavily in here that is mentioned in Throne of Glass. And this character means a lot to Selena. However, when I read about this character in Throne of Glass, I had no idea who they were. I was very confused because obviously that character meant a lot to her and you don't really understand what happens. And then there's kind of an explanation and you're like, wait, what happened there? So that's explained here. So for that aspect, I feel like this would potentially be the better first pick so you know what i'm gonna go out on a limb and say read this book first if you've never read throne of glass and you want to start start with the assassin's blade these are five short stories but they fit together like they're all back to back um so it doesn't really feel like a short story collection um i would say you know push through there's gonna be a lot about the world um like there's a map in here there's gonna be a lot about the world that you're not going to understand and that isn't explained but just know that it'll kind of like be introduced in throne of glass i don't know like you, it's impossible to read two books simultaneously but almost i feel like we could have combined them and then it would have been a really really good first book because I feel like there's sort of a chicken and egg situation going on. I feel like you can't fully appreciate The Assassin's Blade without having first read Throne of Glass and then you can't really appreciate Throne of Glass without having read this and understanding what Selene has gone through. So I'd say if you're more of a character driven reader definitely start with The Assassin's Blade. I think it better describes a lot of trauma that Selena has gone through and a lot of events leading to why her character is so goddamn cocky. Uh, I love it. I love an unlikable character but I know a lot of people People really don't like Selena. So start there and then read Throne of Glass. But if you are more of a concept driven reader, um, especially in fantasy, then I'd say probably read Throne of Glass because it does introduce a lot more of like the conflicts, the world itself. Yeah. So if I ever do a reread of this series, I'm definitely going to start here. This book had more of an emotional 
reaction for me than Throne of Glass did. I wasn't crying or anything like that, but just knowing where Selena is at the beginning of Throne of Glass and knowing that no matter what happens in here, that's going to be where this book ends kind of sucks. Knowing the fates of some characters kind of suck. Um, I have heard also that a couple of these do introduce characters that are heavily featured later on in the series. So if you are picking this up, especially as your first book, really pay attention to the characters and remember them because apparently a lot of them will be reintroduced later on. So this was the second book that I finished in August. Um, the first one was Venus in the Blind Spot by Gigi Ito. It hasn't come out yet at the time I'm filming this. I actually got an e-arc from NetGalley. I was so excited about that. I love Gigi Ito's work. I was excited to read it like before anyone else could pretty much and I enjoyed the content itself. I will say kind of be wary of like that kind of content on NetGalley as it stands right now. Definitely pick it up on if you have a tablet, do that instead of my phone, um, which is the only thing I had available to me at the time to read it on. Um, definitely it's not going to be as good of an experience as if you're reading a bigger copy because obviously having a bunch of panels on this small screen, I have an iPhone 6, it's not the same as reading like the actual book-sized illustrations and Junji Ito has wonderful illustrations so where I suspect probably shouldn't have requested it because I probably would have enjoyed it more had I read it in the way it was intended and I just think there's like a lot of glitchy things um about the NetGalley app that I'm hoping they improve soon. So now I've read two e-arcs from NetGalley. The first one was an audiobook and that one would just randomly like stop playing and I'd have to restart the app and start it up again. And then for the um, Junji Ito audiobook, if I was reading it, say this is a still that I'm reading, um, it would start scrolling back up to the top automatically. So I'd have to like hold my finger on the screen um, to stay on that specific page, which again, I don't know, you know, I have an older phone, so maybe just my phone is not the most up to date um, and doesn't work the best with NetGalley, but that was a little bit frustrating. So that kind of hindered my reading experience, but I really did enjoy it. And that's actually really weird. I just, the two things that I've read in August so far have been short story collections because Venus in the Blind Spot is also like a best of collection, uh, short story collection. And then I just realized the audiobook I picked up today is also a short story collection, 20th Century Ghosts by Joe Hill. This is very out of character for me. If you've been around here for a little bit, you know, I love huge books. I'm not a big fan of short stories. If it is going to be a short story collection, I prefer them to be done by authors that I already really love their long form work. I am I know a lot of people use short stories and I think a lot of anthology collections, like they're designed this way to read and find new authors and then check out their other work. It doesn't work that way for me. It just has to be like the author's collection and then I'll enjoy it, I guess. I don't know. So I think I'm gonna pick up a novel next for a physical book. Honestly, I kind of just wanna go ahead and read Crown of Midnight. Now that I'm saying this, I really hope this is the next book. Let me double check that real fast. I'm pretty sure this is the second book in a series. I am overthinking this now, but I kind of want to pick this up and then also I did do a little poll on my Instagram. I'll leave a link down below. Follow me on there if you haven't already. But I had a poll in my stories having my followers choose my next book of the month read or which book of the month book that I would start first from this month. And overwhelmingly the space between worlds won. So I definitely want to pick this up. I was going to pick it up last night. My partner had to go back home for a dentist appointment. So I was going to be home alone. And, and this book isn't scary. I have no problem with reading or consuming scary horror content when I'm by myself, but this is actually scary to me. This is a very existential sci-fi. So I didn't want to, and it's very short too, so I didn't want to read this and then just kind of be by myself thinking about the universe and the multiverse and just existence as a whole. So I'm waiting until he comes back to pick this up because again, I can watch horror movies all day long. I can read horror books all day long, not be affected, can sleep perfectly well at night, but give me an existential sci-fi or honestly really anything set in space. Like Alien is like a horror set in space, but it doesn't even have to be horrific. Just the fact that it's in space and just thinking about the universe is very um, scary for me. I guess that's like one thing I'm really scared of. That 
and like the bottom of the ocean because no one knows what's under there. All that long rant to tell you that I want to pick this up but when I'm not home alone so I'll probably go ahead and pick up Crown of Midnight because that's just a fantasy and that'll just be a fun time and then I will chat with you guys tomorrow. This is already a way longer clip than I had anticipated for my introduction clip to the vlog but I guess I was missing vlogging because I just keep thinking of more things to talk about so I will check back in with you guys tomorrow. Tuesday. Almost Wednesday. It's pretty late on Tuesday, but I think in terms of vlogs, I'm going to have the vlogs be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and just not film on Tuesday and Thursday because Tuesdays especially is when I really sit down and film my sit down videos. So really that sit down video is pretty much all that I went to film that day. So I might be doing that. So we'll see if I have an update on Thursday, but I did read some of Crown of Midnight and I am on page 91 and I will say that it's become very clear to me um, that you definitely should read the novellas before. Um, at least that's what I would suggest that you read before you start the Throne of Glass series because there are a lot of events mentioned in here that um, were talked about and that happened in the Assassin's Blade so definitely definitely read those novellas before you start the series. I think you'll be a lot better off because there are some things that are again mentioned here that I wouldn't really care about or I wouldn't know enough about and be really confused why I didn't know more information about the events, but they happen in the novellas. So like, yeah, there's some assassin stuff that's happened, but mostly it's been a lot of love triangle, very cheesy sort of things. Like everyone has suppressed emotions for each other. And um, so it's not really my usual. It's a lot lighter and a lot more romance than my usual. But this is a great little bit of serotonin. It's, it's honestly nice to read something that's not as high stakes as what I normally read. So I was going to listen to more of my audiobook today and then I just got really distracted listening to Morbid. That's one of the true crime podcasts that I listen to. So that just didn't happen. And now I'm going to take a bath and go to bed. So I work tomorrow. So I'll probably read more from that. Short stories aren't really my thing. So I think I'll like divide 20th century ghosts into trying to listen to at least one a day at work. Um, just, I've been so into podcasts lately. I mean, I am a podcast person in general. I have a ton that I like to listen to. Not a ton, but a lot. But I don't know if it's just like what kind of mood I'm in or if it's just because I feel like podcasts take a little less brain power out of you than reading an audiobook. But I've just been on a big podcast kick. So <laughs> I want to try and finish at least the first short story in 20th Century Ghost tomorrow. That one is actually pretty long. I thought it was shorter. Um, but it's been almost an hour in the audiobook and I haven't finished it, but I think it's coming soon. So I'll probably maybe try and knock out two tomorrow. And yeah, filmed my Summerween TBR, which I'm super excited about. So that'll be up. Actually, that'll already be up when you're watching this. So that was, that was fun. I had some fun picking out some good books for those prompts. Um, and that's, that's it for this clip. I will check back in with you guys tomorrow. Thursday time for another reading update. I was planning on doing this update a whole lot sooner but I ended up watching like two and a half episodes of Umbrella Academy today. I just finished season one so no spoilers for season two but I'm looking forward to watching that. I really really 
love that show. I'm really glad that I started watching it. It was definitely one that's been on my to watch list for a while and I've just never got around to it. So I'm glad that I finally um, sat down and watched it. So me and my partner started it like earlier on this week and pretty much binged the whole thing um, with like the time that we had. And I'm really excited for season two and kind of the premise that is going to be set up for that. So I did actually read from my audiobook and so that's 23% of the way that I'm through with it. I am on the fourth short story. The first one, I never got the name of it and it was okay. It ended really suddenly for me and it was a really long one too. So I felt like the payoff was not worth um, everything leading up to the short story, but the writing was good. So that was that was fine. The next one was 20th Century Ghosts and that of course is what the collection is named. I really liked this one and it wasn't scary. It was very sentimental and wistful. That is a really good word for a lot of Joe Hill's shorter stories in particular. I think a lot of his short story collections aren't necessarily horror, like Horns or Nosferatu would be considered horror, but they're very wistful and even when they have like supernatural paranormal elements, some of my favorite short stories by him are actually like more sad, not scary at all, and this one had some elements. There's obviously a ghost in there, but this one, I don't know if it's because I'm reading it during the pandemic and I haven't been to the movie theaters um, since February, but it was about a ghost inside a movie theater and kind of going through different time periods and the people who interact with this ghost, who see this ghost in the theater, and it ends up really impacting them. And it was very sad and it made me very, very nostalgic and I'm really excited to go back to theaters when they're safe again. But that one was really, really good. I always find it like a little bit awkward on my end when I read the short story that the collection's named after because obviously, um, well actually I don't know obviously, I don't know how they're picked, but I would assume that the author has some say in saying which short story they want the collection to be named after. Again, I'm not an expert in the publishing industry, so I would guess, so it's always awkward for me when I don't like the short story that the collection's named after, but I loved it. And it might be one of my favorites of the collection, but again, I've only read three. And then the third one, I forget the name of that one as well, because it's not the audiobook production itself. I've just been having these issues with Libby for some older audiobooks. Um, and I don't know if I like I need to update the app. I checked. I don't have an update waiting for me But I don't know what it is like the tracks and the pacing is all wrong So it says I've been in the epilogue for about an hour now in the audiobook But I'm only like 23% of the way through it But I don't know if you can see from the angle or not, but it says I'm on the credits in the collection But there's like 200 more minutes of the story and it's going through short stories so i'm clearly not in the credits so something weird's going on with this audiobook but the third short story was about a boy made of helium and again not scary actually more like fantasy and that is something to note um joe hill's short story collections are not pure horror um, they're a mix of horror, more of like literary fiction sometimes too, and then also like dark fantasy. So if you're going into a short story collection of his expecting to be scared by each one, that's not going to happen because this one was also um, kind of just exploring some deeper topics. It's about a boy and his best friend is made of like helium, like he's a balloon boy. It's set in our world, but this isn't like an issue. Um, it's apparently something that happens in our world. And so like everyone just accepts that this kid is a balloon made of helium and this kid befriends him and it's their friendship. So it's a very weird premise, but obviously like the feelings and the emotions being explained are real things. And I don't know, I, I liked that one too. It was very, very bizarre. And like that one, it's a shorter story or you, you know, as soon as you hear like the setup, how it's kind of going to end, but you read through the whole thing, hoping that you're wrong, but you're not, but the journey is so good that it doesn't matter. Um, and also I don't really mind, um, if short stories are a little more predictable. So yeah, other than the audiobook snafus, I've really been enjoying reading 20th Century Ghosts. And then I am almost done. I'm, I just have the dust jacket up here with me. 
but I'm almost done with Crown of Midnight. I really want to order the next book in the series, let me tell you. Um, at the beginning of 2020, had someone told me that I would not have only read Sarah J Mass, but have really enjoyed everything that I've read by her and I'm on my fourth book. I believe this is my fourth book by her that I've read this year. I probably wouldn't have believed you. Um, and it wasn't anything that I was anti Sarah J Mass or anything like that, but I was really on a roll with really grim, dark adult fantasy and adult horror. And it just didn't seem like something that was ever going to be suited to my reading tastes. And this year I've just really needed, I've still had my same reading preferences, but more than ever, I have found myself kind of, sometimes I'll be in a reading mood, but I won't want to really delve into um, some darker topics because the world's a little dark. So it's just been really nice um, just kind of getting back into YA fantasy in particular. I was never anti-YA fantasy or anything like that, but it just, I just kind of outgrown the genre, but I've really just been enjoying, like I've done a lot of free reads this year, just a lot of escapist, really pure escapist reads where like half of this has been very romance heavy. I'm not a romance gal. I never really have been. Um, and this is just fun. I mean, it's just fun to sit back and read about a young assassin living her best. I'm not justifying myself for this. This is a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun reading this series, but it is getting late and I do have a lot of filming plans tomorrow just in terms of trying to pre-film some content for September and October. So if you have anything that you'd like to see from me, definitely leave them down below. I have some ideas planned out. I have some ideas that I'd like to do, but they definitely take more time. So I'm trying to figure out how much time to invest in them. Um, but if there's anything you'd like to see from me, leave it down below because I'll try and make that happen for you. I'm trying to make some really good spooky seasonal content this year. So just let me know down below. And with that, I will check back in with you guys tomorrow. Every time I try and work out, <laughs> you are just in my way. <laughs> Let me work out. Hello, happy Thursday. I just finished filming and editing a very exciting video. Like I mentioned before, I am starting to film more spooky content for spooky season, the Halloween season, what have you. And the first video that's coming out in that series is a beginner's guide to Riley Sager. So I'm excited for that. Um, when this comes out, it'll be coming out on Thursday. So keep an eye out for that. I'm pretty proud of it, not gonna lie. But in terms of reading updates, I did finish Crown of Midnight last night. I think maybe for a younger reader, there would be a lot of plot twists in here, especially the big reveal at the end of this book would come as a big surprise. For me, I mean, I do read a lot of high fantasy and a lot of that does have to deal with chosen one tropes and all of that. So for me, when something was introduced at the beginning of this book, I kind of knew where it was going, but I did look up the actual age range that this series is recommended for, and I believe it was ages 13 to 17 or 14 to 17, something like that. But I think it was cleverly enough done that that age range, you know, you might guess it, you might not. Even though I knew where it was going, um, I enjoyed the journey there and I'm really excited. I think I'm going to go ahead and order the next book in this series because I'm very intrigued on where it's going to go. And of course with any big series it's going to be harder and harder to talk about the books that I'll read in the series because this is book two, technically book three if you count the novellas. So then, you know, the next one. It's kind of hard to talk about without spoiling. But I did start The Space Between Worlds today and I'm not very far at all but I am really intrigued by it. So the premise of this book is multiverse travel is finally possible, but there's just one catch. No one can visit a world where their counterpart is still alive. Enter Kara, whose parallel selves happen to be exceptionally good at dying from disease, turf wars, or vendettas they couldn't outrun. Kara's life has been cut short on 372 worlds in total. So I believe this is actually going to be sort of a mystery just reading the rest of what the dust jacket talks about. But I think it's really interesting talking about these aspects of the multiverse
survivors travel it mentions like right on the first couple of pages that actually the disadvantaged in earth one the one that's doing all of this experimentation um, are actually the most popular and the most valued for this work because people who are very low status have higher mortality rates when it comes to even things like childbirth um, just, you know, poor impoverished areas where your life is not the best, you're more likely to die young and to die when your counterpart is still alive on Earth One. So that's where Kara comes in. I feel like there is going to be a lot of discussion about that and about the privilege because it did talk about when they first started doing the multiverse, a lot of scientists were the ones trying to go to the different Earths, but because they also had a privileged upbringing on the other Earths, they were still alive on those Earths, so it didn't work. So I think there are going to be a lot of social issues like that kind of discussed in here, which I think is fascinating. And I believe this is a standalone. I looked on Goodreads and it didn't say it was part of any series, so I am excited about that. Um, I've you know, I'm in the middle of a big series right now, so it's good to pick up a standalone. But that's really all I have for the moment. I am gonna go ahead and start reading more of this right now, The Space Between Worlds, and I will check back in with you guys maybe a little bit later, maybe tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. still Thursday and I am going to talk about this more during my August book haul but this could not wait. We went to Half Price Books today but we went to one that was a little further away from us just because our Half Price Books has a really good manga, comics, graphic novels section but not so much print books at least the genres that I like to read from so we went to a different one that was about 25 minutes away. I hit the mother load in general but I really hit the mother load because I found the Bachman books. For those of you who don't read a lot of King or aren't like as obsessed with him as I am, the Bachman books are a pretty big deal because they are out of print, at least this bind up is out of print, because Rage, one of the short stories in here, is actually about a school shooting. So I believe it was after Columbine, it was pulled from print altogether, so you can't find it anywhere for a really good price. It was under $20, I'll just say that, which is insane if you go to thrift books and look at the price of what the Bachman books are going for, because again, you can find pretty much any other of these like The Long Walk, Roadwork, The Running Man. The Long Walk in particular is a pretty famous Stephen King short story, so you can find those, but you can't find Rage, and honestly I probably don't even think that I'm going to like Rage too much just because of what it's discussing, and you know I feel like King obviously had a reason why he decided to pull it after Columbine, but I wasn't even looking for this, and I'm so excited that I found it. It's in really good condition. Too. I was freaking out in the store. I think one of my September videos is going to be a reading vlog of the Bachman books because I have not read any of them and I think it would be a journey especially because I know actually The Long Walk is my dad's favorite Stephen King work so that's that would be really fun to read so that's it for today. I'll probably geek out about it more on my August book haul but for now I got the Bachman books. I'm very excited.
Good morning, guys. Happy Sunday. It's going to be the last day of this vlog. This will be my last little update. I didn't update you guys like this weekend at all just because we actually went to Ikea and got a new bookshelf. So I kind of inserted some little clips of bookshelf reorganization. I definitely don't have the most cohesive shelves now. I have like a entire bookcase that's Stephen King and then some horror and then the other one is basically fantasy and then some bleed over horror from the other bookshelf. And downstairs we're kind of making our own DIY entertainment center. So not only is that one going to have, I think it's just at this point in time going to just have my book of the month books, but it also has like our video games, our movies, stuff like that. So, so pretty much going to Ikea, setting up the new bookshelf, maneuvering all of the different bookshelves um, to kind of get them the way that I like took a little bit of time. And then I have also been really busy at some continuing education for myself. Brandon Sanderson teaches at BYU and he teaches like creative writing through a sci-fi fantasy lens. And for the January semester, all of the lectures are actually uploaded online. So I've been watching one a day. And so those have been actually really helpful in my writing. And so I've never actually read anything by Brendan Sanderson. Um, so I probably need to get on that. But I thought it was really helpful because for me, I love Stephen King's book on writing. I think it's one of my favorite books that he's done. And it was very helpful for certain aspects, but he is way more more of a just sit down and write and see where it takes you kind of person. I'm more structured, so Brandon Sanderson is also more structured, so hearing how he really sits down and plans out these epic fantasies and plans out character arcs has been very helpful to me. And of course, that advice is free to give on YouTube. I think there's like 10 to 12 videos because each video is that week's lecture and it's about an hour long. So definitely a time investment because you want to sit down and watch them like you were in class as a college graduate. I cannot tell you how much I missed learning in that kind of environment. Um, so each morning for the past couple of mornings, I've been waking up and doing that first thing in the morning, have a little breakfast, uh, drink on the side, start my day with some writing tips. That's been really, really fun. And then on a more reading note, I did finish a book this weekend and that is The Space Between Worlds. I loved this. I really loved this. And I do believe this might be one of my favorite books of the year. It has a potential too. It's a shorter sci-fi and I don't want to give too much about it because honestly, the dust jacket does have enough information to get you intrigued and make you wanting to read the book, but it quickly becomes something that's way different that is promised. Um, and it's really cool and I don't want to spoil it at all. But essentially this is, I believe it's supposed to be our futuristic world, but people have figured out how to go between different worlds in the multiverse. But the catch is only certain people can go to these worlds. They can only be the worlds that are closest to our own. They can only be the worlds in which you have like a proxy of you on that earth and your proxy has to be dead. So this actually talks a lot about privilege and opportunity, chance and um, generational wealth, generational privilege, um, even like the myths of building yourself up by the bootstraps and being able to carve out something for yourself. It's kind of discussed how likely it is, depending on your background, for it to be even possible for you to do that. Our main character is a black woman named Kara and she is a really good traverser because she has been killed on so many of the other Earths or she's died um, from circumstances because she was not raised in the best situations, which makes her a good candidate for this. So she's really being used by this corporation because her life is just not the best, not the most privileged, and because her other selves have died either very young due to lack of care, lack of nutrition, lack of love, violence from the state and from other people because her mother on most worlds is a sex worker. She's a very valuable asset for this company and is traveling to a bunch of different Earths for them. This is a very cool concept, but she is just doing this for a paycheck and for a way to pull herself up from the situation that she was born in. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Things start happening that make things a little more morally ambiguous and have Kara question her role in the multiverse, her role in the universe. This was really good. 
This is probably lighter on the sci-fi other than the aspects where Kara is traveling from world to world. There's not a lot of other sci-fi elements in here. It does take place on just a few different worlds and it just feels more of like a futuristic dystopian society as opposed to it being really hardcore sci-fi. So don't let the fact that this is sci-fi scare you away from it. I thought it was very accessible. I finished it pretty much in one sitting. So a couple of days ago I had started it and got until chapter two. And then I put it down for a couple of days and then I picked it up last night and just read the rest. This is the author's debut work so I'm really looking forward to seeing what else they come out with. And so this just really ended my week, ended my reading week on a really good note and I'm really excited to pick up some more books because I was feeling a little bit slumpy. I have noticed I've only read three things or now this is the fourth thing so far in August, which is still fine, still great, but I mean normally I read 10 to 12 books a month. We're in the middle of August and I've only read four. One of them was a manga, so this one really made me really want to sit down and read another good book again soon, so keep an eye out for my next weekly vlog. That is going to be the end of this weekly vlog. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to my content for more content from me, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye!